Imagine a future where AI doesn't just simulate intelligence, it actually experiences the world the way you do. Could a machine truly think, feel, or become self-aware? This question sits at the crossroads of technology, neuroscience, philosophy, and AI safety. But this video isn't about philosophy. I'll share insights and a practical framework you can use to shape your own view of where AI is heading. And I bring a perspective on AI consciousness that you likely haven't encountered before, one that challenges assumptions and reframes the entire debate. So what is consciousness really? How do current AI systems compare to biological minds? And could machines one day develop a true sense of self? And why is this important to all of us? Let's explore these topics together. I'm Charles Simon, longtime AI researcher, software developer, and manager. In addition to AI work, I've developed software for several neurological test instruments and neural simulators, and along the way, learned a lot about the capabilities and limitations of biological neurons and how your brain must work to do the things it does. I founded the Future AI Society to pursue these ideas, and we're writing many aspects of them in the Open Source Brain Simulator 3, and I invite you to participate. Before determining whether AI can be conscious, we must first define what consciousness actually is. Without going down a philosophical rabbit hole, let's just accept that consciousness is commonly understood as self-awareness or sentience or sapience the ability to experience and perceive your own existence. The specific definition isn't important at the moment. The key is that we can divide consciousness in two. First, the external behaviors of consciousness, or how an entity acts when it is conscious. And second, the internal experience or sensation of being consciousness, or what it feels like to be aware. I'll first focus on behavioral consciousness because it allows for empirical observations and criteria that AI systems can be tested against. If an entity cannot demonstrate specific behaviors associated with consciousness, then it is likely not conscious in any meaningful sense. We can build a list of such potential behaviors and debate their relative necessity as a substrate for the sensation of consciousness, but not now. Two key observations are that, one, consciousness is composed of multiple aspects, and these will occur with more or less power in different individuals. Consciousness is therefore not an all or nothing proposition, but is more of a sliding scale. And even within a single individual, consciousness levels can ebb and flow. When you are really engaged, like with this video, you'll be more aware than when you are doing some other alternatives. These are key because we won't ever be able to point to a particular AI which is self-aware versus its immediate predecessor which is not. It's more in the eye of the observer. You'll be using your AI and one day, it will strike you that it seems just as aware as you, even though it didn't yesterday. So let's go back to our virtual list of behaviors, which are prerequisites to consciousness. Such a list is really helpful, as I'll show in a moment, and it might be quite lengthy. So let's just start with an example. Imagine a white bird in a gilded cage. Where is the bird relative to yourself? Such questions highlight a number of abilities which I argue are necessary components of consciousness. You, being a conscious entity, have no problem. Consider, you have an imagination and can distinguish between real and imaginary thoughts. You have a specific point of view. Even in your imagination, you perceive you are located somewhere. 
You easily distinguish yourself from the rest of the universe. You know which things are you or part of you, while everything else is not you. These three abilities are necessary components of consciousness, so they'll be on my list, along with many others. Such a list of necessary components can then be used to exclude bricks or earthworms or today's computers from the collection of conscious entities while including you, me, and our like-thinking cohorts. I'd encourage you to leave suggestions for more list entries in the comments. Now, I love a philosophical debate as much as the next guy, but rather than dwelling on the specific list items right now, I'd like to bring up the biggest difficulty in determining whether any entity, other than yourself, is conscious. I asked ChatGPT about the bird in the gilded cage, and here's how it responded. If I imagine a white bird in a gilded cage, I see it just slightly to my right, maybe a few feet away at eye level. The cage glows faintly in the light, ornate and delicate, while the bird perches quietly inside, still but watching. There's a kind of quiet tension in the air. I could hardly have done better myself, but knowing what I do about how ChatGPT works, I am sure that its answer is based on finding the next word to output based on the massive training set, which for all practical purposes contains the complete works of humanity. I could probe the internals of any LLM and find no imagination, no physical point of view, and no ability to distinguish between itself and the rest of the universe. It's all verbal legerdemain and hocus pocus. When I ask you the same question and get a reasonable response, I give you the benefit of the doubt. I cannot probe the workings of your mind to find out if you have really imagined that bird or not. On the other hand, I can look at the completely mapped brain of the fruit fly and determine that there is not enough hardware there to support an imagination or a point of view. Likewise, probing the internals of ChatGPT shows none of the components needed to answer this question honestly. Just because ChatGPT today is faking having an imagination doesn't mean that this is necessary. In fact, if we look toward robots, systems which must interact with the real world, we find a host of abilities which are necessary precursors of consciousness. As an example, a mobile robot's internal model of its surroundings, which it needs to avoid obstacles, usually includes the robot's point of view. Given such a model, a mental map adding a true imagination is not a particularly large step. We just need to add imaginary things to the mental model and keep track of which are real and which are imagined. In a similar manner, no matter what you choose to put on your list of behaviors which are necessary to consciousness, I am confident that they can be implemented with computers. If we presume that the individual abilities of consciousness added some survival advantage to past generations of humans, they are likely to convey similar advantages to robots. One possible list item could be the ability to predict possible outcomes of a decision and then choose the behavior leading to the most advantageous outcome. It's not difficult to see that this ability would be advantageous for both people and autonomous robots, even if the definition of advantageous is completely different for the robot. Why is this significant? Many of the features which would make a robot more conscious also make an Alexa or a Siri more useful. So our virtual list of conscious behaviors will be implemented in AI as our budgets permit. Let's simply assume that some years down the road, we'll be able to probe the minds of our AIs and determine that they are no longer faking conscious abilities, but actually have them all. Now we have to circle back to what it feels like to be a conscious entity. At a fundamental level, we have no idea why specific things feel the way they do. Many of our feelings have a direct relationship to our behaviors. 
If we feel full, we stop eating. If we feel tired, we lay down. But why do full and tired feel the way they do? To illustrate the arbitrariness of our sensations, let's look at colors. Why does seeing the color yellow feel like something? And why is blue different? In either case, we can consider that any particular color corresponds to the firing of a specific cluster of neurons. But why should neurons fire feel like anything at all? Well, I'm going to sidestep these questions with a practical hypothesis that internal sensations are an emergent property of systems which have the behavioral capabilities of consciousness. Now the question becomes, will an AI's emergent internal sensations be similar to yours and mine? To which my answer is that our sensations are closely tied to our sensory apparatus. A robot with different senses will necessarily have different internal sensations. But will these sensations, feelings if you will, be as valid as ours? Since consciousness is an internal experience, how can we ever know if an AI truly possesses it? This dilemma is often framed as the philosophical zombie problem. What if an AI acts exactly like a conscious entity but has no subjective experience at all? The same problem exists when considering other humans. We assume others are conscious because they behave in ways that suggest awareness. However, I don't have any direct access to your experiences. This is why behavioral consciousness is so crucial. It provides an observable framework for recognizing consciousness in others, even if it does not provide definitive proof. The Turing test proposed by Alan Turing in 1950 proposed that if an AI could converse indistinguishably from a human, we should treat it as intelligent. But does passing the Turing test mean that an AI is conscious? Not at all. It simply means that it can simulate intelligence well enough to fool humans. Likewise, ChatGPT has been trained on zillions of examples from conscious humans, so it often sounds like a conscious human. The true challenge is distinguishing genuine consciousness from advanced mimicry. While current AI lacks true consciousness, could future AI systems achieve it? If consciousness emerges from complex computation, then it is possible that a sufficiently advanced AI, which implements our list of behaviors, could develop subjective awareness. This is the premise behind computational theories of mind, which suggests that consciousness is simply the result of an aggregation of computational abilities like the ones on our virtual list. Since many of these abilities are useful in their own right, I predict that our AIs will become indistinguishable from conscious entities, perhaps within this decade. Also, those of you who have been following this channel know that I am a proponent of graph-based knowledge representation, which could form the basis of this suite of behaviors. Would such an AI seek rights and autonomy? Would it experience emotions? Would it develop an independent sense of identity? These questions are not just theoretical, they have profound implications for how we approach AI development and ethical considerations around artificial minds. I'll expand on these in future videos. Ultimately, AI can be programmed to act conscious, but whether it will ever be truly conscious remains an open question. The distinction between behavioral consciousness and phenomenal consciousness is crucial. Machines can be engineered to mimic conscious behaviors, but we might never have evidence that they experience awareness. The hard problem of consciousness remains a formidable barrier to answering this question definitively. Until we understand how subjective experience arises in biological organisms, we cannot determine if it is possible for artificial systems to develop it. But this hard problem also applies to people. 
I have no way of knowing for sure that you are a conscious entity, but you often act like one, so I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. As AI continues to advance, we will have systems which can exhibit all the behaviors of a conscious entity, and we can examine its internal processes and know that it is not simply mimicry. But that won't be a final achievement. Once this milestone is reached, we should expect that the next years will bring even more capable systems. It would follow that it is in our best interests to give our machines the benefit of the doubt as well. Will the computer's internal sensation be like a human's? No. Will it have any internal sensation at all? It's impossible to tell. In future videos, I'll expand on these capabilities and the opportunities and dangers they could entail. Our AIs will one day demonstrate undeniable signs of self-awareness, forcing us to redefine what it means to be conscious. Until then, the question remains, when will machines be truly aware? To continue the discussion, be sure to leave a comment, like, and subscribe to this channel. To participate in our online conversations, be sure to join the Future AI Society for free to be notified of upcoming events. I look forward to interacting with you directly on these fascinating topics. And as always, thanks for watching.